Testing, testing, one, two, three. Another shower thought. Because some of the most thought-provoking ideas come to us underwater. Some of us. If it ain't happened to you, then I'm not making that journalized statement. Pop it. It's on my mind tonight. Here's what's on my mental. We have one night stands with positive affirmations. Those words we use to encourage ourselves, calling them words, we allow them in our head, but then we treat them like a one night stand. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say, if Everything we know about thoughts and depression and thoughts and action, like they work together. And now, because of the algorithms, one of the things I see a lot on my social media feed is about all of these, what I'm going to refer to as studied intellects. have uncovered that words have meaning deeper than what we think. Like they call them word spells, basically. Like words are spells, right? So the spiritual community talks about the importance of being nice to yourself, right? Because words are spells. And we know this to be true. Many of us who have experienced depression know this to be true because depression deep rest if you think about it deep rest depression is our body telling us that it's tired of being in this place so i'm going to shut down because i don't like the way you're treating me that is that's if depression and you could have a conversation depression would be telling you that right like i'm just gonna give up because i didn't try it so when we understand that our bodies are these mechanisms, they're like they're like computers or they're like our phones with these powerful apps and powerful capabilities, like that is our body. And we realize that the words that we are programming into our head, the thoughts that we are programming into our head, control our moods, our reactions, and so on and so forth. The foods that we put in our body control the thoughts that come in our come in our head, right? So there's so much connection to it. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this to say the one night stands we have with our positive affirmations, we need to flip and switch the assignment because we've proven to ourselves that negative thoughts equal these behaviors that are not very desirable, right? Over and over again. It's like we're in a long-term, multi-season, 24 episodes a year relationship with our negative thoughts. And as a matter of fact, just like some of our favorite Netflix shows or before streaming came out and, and then people weren't releasing all of the episodes all at once, we were looking forward to the next episode because they would always leave us with cliffhangers on our favorite shows. One of my favorite shows back in the day was Criminal Minds and CSI. I, it was a cliffhanger and every Wednesday at 8 o'clock, CST, I was ready to catch it. Oh, and when DVR came out, that made it even better. So I was looking forward to the next episode. And so here's what I mean when I say... We are in these long-term relationships with our negative thoughts. We're in these long-term relationships with our negative thoughts. And then even when we turn our negative thoughts off to go on these one-night stands with, with our future self, the self we want to be, all of a sudden, we feel like there's a cliffhanger on the other side that's telling me some stuff about to go down so I can't pursue this happy relationship with myself. So, you know, that's going to be it. It's a one night stand. It ain't you, it's me. So we, we, we are so quick to leave our positive affirmations hanging, but we running back every day to these thoughts that have proven to us, as long as you keep thinking about me, baby, I'm going to keep withholding everything you want.
every study that you pick up in this community of people that are having this conversation will talk about thoughts, our actions, and our behaviors, and how all of that is connected to our nervous system. Much like your phone and your computer's operating system that makes you able to actually hear this talk from Florida tonight, much like your phone's operating system and apps that you install, it has needs. It will need to be charged after a long day. You gotta update some of those apps in your phone. Your phone gives you a reminder when it's time to update it. So does your body. That's what depression is. Depression is your body saying, hey, this app is not working as well. We've identified some bugs and improvements and we need to update it. Some apps even go as far, especially us on these operating systems owned by the big guys, are forced to update. Like literally forced to update. And then again, some apps won't make you update. You can choose to if you want or you don't have to if you don't want. It's kind of like, uh, if you update me, I'm promising to work better, but if you don't, I ain't making no promise. So the same thing we're doing with our bodies, right? We got to update our thoughts. We got to update our operating system. We got to break up these long-term relationships with these negative thoughts that are all associated with how we were programmed originally in our childhood. And now we can't seem to shake them thoughts. Why don't we pick up the phone and get those positive affirmations about ourselves, look ourselves dead in our pupils. Don't break eye contact with yourself. Hold that look if you have access to a mirror and some good light. Look yourself dead in the pupil. And say, will you go out with me? Circle yes or no. I want you back. Circle yes or no. And if you have to apologize to yourself while you're looking at your future self in the mirror, apologize to her or him. Let your future self know you get what your operating system is trying to tell you and you're ready to do something about it. Don't leave it hanging. Don't make this one a one night stand. Stay with these positive affirmations. Look forward to the next season, after the next season, after the next season. Kind of like we look forward to the next season or the next episode of our favorite shows. We do that same thing with our thoughts. And we change the way we see not only ourselves, but others. A world without childhood adversities would be a world filled with compassionate people. But a world with one in six people having four or more aces is a world filled with people who need to meet a compassionate person. We didn't ask to be born into childhood adversities. Childhood adversities chose us. The solutions that we all need access to are out there and available. But they're only available to people with the resources. If only the people with the resources can get to the solution, then not enough people are sharing their resources. And that is a problem for humanity when we're all borrowing this place. We are all one with this place. 
This place belongs to all of us. And nobody should have to be without because they don't have the resources. We're ignoring a problem that's creating another problem. Everybody should want to be involved in this if we really cared about saving humanity from its ultimate demise. Kids killing, smoking, drinking, bullying, dying from suicide school shootings, kids committing crimes with their parents, survival crimes, hate crimes. The solution is in the story we are telling ourselves how many people want to be a part of the conversation to do something about it.